Hi guys, good morning. For today's topic, we are going to tackle the performance-based assessment, what are its characteristics, the purpose, and also what are the types of uh, performance-based assessment. Performance-based assessment measures students' ability to apply the skills and knowledge learned from a unit or units of study. What are the purposes of performance-based assessment? The first one is it attracts learners work on a task. The second is Show them the value of work processes. The third one, help them to have a self-monitor so that they can use tools such as a periodic reflections, working files, and learning logs more effectively. What are the essential characteristics of performance-based assessment. First is complex. Second is authentic. The third one is the process or product-oriented, open-ended, and lastly is the time-bound. So what are the types of performance-based tasks? The first one is Restricted Performance Based Task The second one is Extended Performance Based Task The Product Extended Constructed Response And lastly is Performance A Restricted Performance Based Task It is restricted to a specific limited skill. The second one is extended performance based task. So it is a comprehensive, includes a variety of skills, gives students a lot of freedom in selecting, performing, and self assessing on task the third one is product so this task uh, requires students to demonstrate the understanding through transfer of learning so the example of products are drawings paintings sculptures costumes mask and lastly is model next is extended constructed response task requires students to construct a written answer in response to a question or task rather than to select one from a list Examples are Compare pieces of literature The second one is solutions to environmental problems and economic events Lastly is Analyze artwork, forms of government or solutions to a problem Lastly is performance it required the students to perform what they have learned. So, examples are uh, playing a musical instrument, carrying out the steps in a specific experiment, working productively in a group, and speaking a foreign language. What are the types of performance-based assessment? 
the first one is individual or group projects. Projects are typically require students to apply their knowledge and skills while uh, completing the prescribed task which often calls to creativity, critical thinking, analysis, and synthesis. The second one is portfolio. Portfolios are systematic, purposeful, and meaningful collections of an individual's work designed to document learning over time. Performances Gameplay during a tournament is also considered a student performance. Rubrics for gameplay can be written so that students are evaluated on all three learning domains which are psychomotor, cognitive, and lastly, affective. Lastly is journals. It can be used to record student feelings, thoughts, perceptions, or reflections about actual events or results. Here are the advantages of performance-based assessment. The first one is collaboration of each group and learners centered. The second one is three domains are very useful in this type of assessment. The third one, the knowledge will uh, retain and the memory of the students can promote students' creativity. So, using a student-centered design can promote student motivation. And lastly, may allow proofs by faculty to gain clearer picture of student understanding or through processes. Here are the disadvantages of performance-based assessment. The first one is the students can easily cheat in this kind of assessment. The second one is too expensive. Too much time needed to complete the project and lastly for teachers too much time allotted for making the rubrics. Implementing performance-based assessment in the classroom. This assessment takes time to implement and assess and provide sufficient time for the task. Teachers may face struggles in implementing the assessment for students but they should rest assured that it can be fun, allow students' interest, and intriguing for learners so that it can be involved in the processes as well have fun and at the same time they learn. For teachers to provide thorough feedback and facilitate the learning showing the activity to offer guidance for his or her learners. Here are the basic steps to plan and execute effective performance-based assessment. The first one is defining the purpose of the performance-based assessment. In order to administer any good assessment, a teacher must have a clearly defined purpose and 
he or she consider the important several questions. Number one, what concept, skill, or knowledge am I trying to assess? Number two, what should my students know? Number three, at what level should my students be performing? And lastly, what type of knowledge is being assessed? Is it reasoning, memory, or process? The second one is choosing the activity. After the teacher defined the purpose of the assessment, he or she can make decisions concerning the activity. There are some things that the teacher take into account before he or she choose the activity, namely the time constraints, availability of resources and the classroom, and how much data is necessary in order to make an informed decision about the quality of the students' performances. The third one is defining the criteria. After the teacher have determined the activity as well as what task will be included in the activity, the teacher need to define which elements of the project determine the success of the student's performance. The teacher must develop his or her own criteria most of the time. And lastly is the assessing the performance. Using this information, teacher can give feedback on a student's performances either in the form of a narrative, report, or a grade. There are several ways to record the results of performance-based assessment, namely checklist approach, narrative anecdotal approach, rating scale approach, and lastly, memory.